We've seen in a number of passages that Thucydides believes that there's a fixed human nature. This lies in his very conception of history. Since human nature is fixed, it's predictable, and knowledge of the past events can be useful as a guide in the future. The idea also lies in the conception of women as presented in Pericles' funeral oration. We find it again in the analysis of the breakdown of the civil order in the plague at Athens and the civil war in Corsera. It's also implicit in the position of the Athenian negotiators in the Melian Dialogue. We've also had occasion to observe that the Greek warrior ethic departs radically from our modern intuitions about what's right and wrong. Thucydides' essentialism about the nature of human beings brings this out clearly. This is particularly evident in the Melian Dialogue. The Athenians argue that humans are determined by nature such that the strong rule the weak. This is the way that nature has created the human and the animal world. This is their argument for why they have the right to conquer and destroy weaker states. They claim that ethics is only relevant where people or states have equal strength, but does not apply in cases where one person or state is much stronger than the other. Thus, the theory of ethics or politics relies on an essentialist theory of human nature. According to this view, humans are determined by nature just like wild animals. Their behavior is dictated by nature, and all talk of ethics or justice is just a waste of time. This picture of human nature scores with Thucydides' notion of human beings as a collection of seething, ungovernable passions. Our immediate impulses want to have free reign, but they're stopped by things such as custom and law. But these prove to be fragile, and in times of crisis, they can be set aside as the passions come out of the shadows to take the upper hand. This view, of course, fails to appreciate the differences between the human sphere and nature. In many of the texts we've studied, the difference was an important point. In Gilgamesh, Enkidu must overcome his life as a creature of nature and become a human being. In Genesis, the story of the fall tells of how it happened that humans stopped being mere animals and emerged into something new and different. Humans can think and reason and do many things that the animals cannot. But these elements of the human spirit are not acknowledged in the argument of the Athenians in the Melian Dialogue. We've often spoken of the conflict of nature and civilization. As humans emerge from nature, they slowly come to emancipate themselves from it in different ways. But in early societies, people still conceive of themselves as a continuous part of nature. According to this idea, we are created by nature in a specific way, and this is constitutive of who we are. It doesn't matter what we might happen to think about it or what we might happen to accomplish. What we are is simply a product of nature. This is an unchanging fact of the universe, just as the natural laws which we discussed in connection with Sophocles. Today, we look at these things in a very different fashion. While we are in some aspects determined by nature, that is, we have specific human bodies, DNA, and genetics, we don't think that these determine us completely. There's still great variation among individual human beings, even though they might be closely related physically, such as siblings or twins. As individuals, they can grow and develop in radically different ways. Even though in the modern world, the natural sciences are much more developed than in ancient Greece, which of course never knew anything about, for example, DNA, and this might lead us to a more deterministic position, that is, that we are determined by our physical bodies, but yet we still hold firmly to the conception of individuality and subjectivity and human freedom. These are ideas that developed over a long period of time and were not yet perceived in any clear way in ancient Greece, despite all the talk about equality and democracy.